G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen, the ice cream bloke, self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School. We're always after new ways to transition into the, into the video. Like, and we thought this one, we're gonna talk about blast freezers. I should actually come out of the blast freezer, but I couldn't fit in. Anyway, thank you very much for our episode sponsor, Lockhead Vanilla. Great vanilla, three generations. Uh, John and George are the actual brothers, but Matt, Darren, a whole lot of people also want to be a Lockhead brother. You can't all be Lockhead brothers. Uh, but thank you very much for their episode sponsorship. Their link is below. Uh, click on it, have a look in the wild world of vanilla. I want to talk in this session a little bit about a blast freezer. And for those of you who uh, currently have a blast freezer or have watched other blast freezer sessions, they're probably going, oh, Steve. Not again. Well, let me explain to you something that those who don't have a blast freezer and continue to think that they can still uh, run their products or their ice cream products and have good quality over a long period of time. I just wanted to show you the inside of this blast freezer. This is a master built IHC 27 single door blast freezer. It's not on because it would be too noisy and we don't want to overly uh, uh, Amplify, I don't know whether that's the right word. Anyway, um, it's a single door blast freezer. You can get them both with the refrigeration system on top or the refrigeration system down below. It doesn't really matter from a sound standpoint, but from a exhaust air standpoint, I prefer my uh, 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 refrigeration system to be on the top. I keep stressing that it's not about the temperature, it's how fast it gets down there. And I still have people emailing me after watching the other blast freezer videos saying, well, but my walk-in freezer, my storage freezer is set at minus 20. It doesn't matter what it's set, I mean, it doesn't matter what it's set to. But what matters is how fast it gets there. The difference between your static freezer and this blast freezer is for the most part, you've got two internal doors. That's extremely important. If you see the term hardening cabinet, they're primarily the same thing but they have two internal doors. If you have a two door, you may have four internal doors, and this basically stops the cold air from escaping if you wanna get in here and take one of your buckets out. So I'm not pulling the whole door open. All of this beautiful cold air is kind of compiling on the floor and frosting down the dogs and anything else you've got on the floor. It basically keeps the bottom door closed while you can access the, the, uh, the product on top. And same down below, if you're just pulling product from the bottom here, you can open up this bottom door pull your ice cream out, whatever you've got in there, novelties, cakes, pies, pints, quartz, put it back in without upsetting too much on the top. That's the big difference. The other big difference is, and I guess you could call it a convection freezer, you've got this big fan here that is that minus 20 air and blowing it all over the product and that's where the rapid decrease in temperature is and you know what they call it in the real world you know what they call it in the uh, meteorological world they call it wind chill it's wind chill so you may have this set at minus 20 but there's a wind chill in there of minus 30. So anyway, what I'm saying is that you may still think that your regular freezer, as cold as it's set, is gonna be fine. And look, it's totally up to you. My catch cry for blast freezers is, do you need one? No. Should you have one? Yes. This is what you're really paying money for. You're paying money for wind chill, you're paying money for air, you're paying money for these two internal doors. And look, if you're doing mostly non-dairy and you're selling it straight into your shop, it's generally not a problem, you may not need one. If you've got pretty good rotation and you're using a smaller container like a gelato pan and you're rotating them through really quickly, you may not need one. But if you are doing anything larger than let's say a gallon of ice cream and it's gonna be in your case for two, three, four, five days and beyond, or you're doing novelties that really depend on those being frozen down and transportable, or you actually have a, uh, a wholesale customer, a catering account where you're delivering ice cream, this is the way to go. I'm just saying.
So anyway, thank you again to our um, sponsor, Lockhead Vanilla. Always very grateful for our sponsors. Uh, and look, leave a comment down below. Do you have one? Do you think you need one? Is this information helpful? Do you have a question about anything else? I had a comment the other day about the word conundrum. Someone liked the word conundrum. So I'm gonna roll it out one more time. If you have any questions, concerns or conundrums about the ice cream industry, leave a comment below or drop us a line. Go to the website, scoopschool.com. I think you'll see it's a brand new website, looking pretty good, don't mind saying so myself. And just finishing off now, this will uh, take you to a subscribe button, subscribe. This is the last video that we did that I think you're gonna find very helpful. And over here, come on into Scoop School, baby. Come on, click it. Keep on scooping. We'll see you on the inside.